So technically we're live, but let's make sure that's true. Let's see, let's see. I'm here with my favorite human, Phoebe Elizabeth. Let's okay. see. All right, hold on, I gotta refresh. And we are live. Coming to you live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Phoebe. We are on episode eight of the Practical Magic Show with my dear, dear, dear friend and whom I may also call artist of me, Phoebe Elizabeth. And today we're talking about how to unlock your authenticity using image, fashion, branding. And there could not be a more perfect human being to be in this conversation with than Phoebe Elizabeth. Uh, I like to refer to myself as Phoebe's Sistine Chapel. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true, but I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. I think so. You should. <laughs> Thank you. So I'd love to intro you and talk about what your magic trick is to me and then dive in and reveal the secrets behind this magic. When I talk about the magic show and the practical magic show, Magic is when somebody creates so effortlessly that it looks like magic. And then we were in a peel back like Penn and Teller. Have you seen a Penn and Teller show on how to actually create that magic or recreate that magic ourselves? So, you know, aside from being a dear, dear friend of mine, uh, I'm really grateful for the professional side of our relationship because you met me at a time where what I could best describe myself is sort of like anti-brand and it was this place that I was in where I felt very disconnected from the idea of how to authentically represent myself in the world and I was looking at the rest of the coaching world and the rest of the marketing world as what appeared to me this very fake inauthentic obnoxiously light um, way of representing yourself that just didn't resonate with me. And so I stepped back and I felt like I don't want to do this. And so I, as my book publisher <laughs> referred to me, was looking like the, you can get away with this because you're cute party girl image <laughs> mixed with like backpacker who shops out of a lost and found bin. And I just was putting in so much effort into my content to like overcompensate that I didn't feel like a professional. Mm -hmm. And when I met you, you just have this very loving, but sniper-like way of zeroing in on like, mm. like, in fact, that's what you do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Working. I mean, the magic trick is truly, I have never sat with anybody who can just zero in on this is your essence. These are your qualities. And then you extract that into the visual and you help translate that on the body in the spirit and then in visual branding and admittedly when we started working together i knew it was important but i had no idea just how much it would impact my life my business the way i showed up the way i felt and so to me your magic trick is so opposite of the traditional concept of image and branding, which is about looking and being in a certain way to draw people in. Mm -hmm. You sit with a person and you draw them out. And that is magical. So that's where I wanna dive in with you today. So feel free to like add, tweak, whatever. Um, well, first I just wanna say thank you. I feel like I am gonna tear up. That's just so, it's just, <laughs> uh, I don't know. For me personally, it's just so moving. This is why I do what I do because of exactly everything that you just said. And to see, to see you start to glow and like see your essence come out um, and live the magic that you are. I, I mean that, and to know that I helped you get there and see, help you see what I saw um, is, I mean, since we're talking about magic, it's magical. Like it really is. It, it truly, um, it's like so profound um, and on many levels. And I think not just for me, but for you too, um, mm -hmm. and for other people that I work with. So um, I think that that's, you know, that's what keeps me going. 
profound is such a perfect word because I think, and we've talked a little bit about this too, that like the word profound and the experience of something magical and profound when it comes to fashion, image, marketing, branding, that's not the traditional experience. Right. I mean, I think it can be, it, I, I think the stereotype is that it's very superficial. Mm. That if you care about what you look, the way you look, if you care about your visual appearance, you know, um, you're seen as um, selfish and, like I said, superficial, or that, you know, you're not a deep person. Um, you know, if you're a woman, maybe you're a little bitchy, um, and that you're mean to others, you're like part of the mean girl group. Mm. And um, I just think that that is, I mean, there are stereotypes for a reason, right? There's like parts of that that can be true, but overall it's not, and it's not really what, um, like what that is about, mm -hmm. like understanding your inner beauty and allowing that to radiate through you with the way that you present yourself to the world, whether it's through your personal life and or your business like how is that superficial it's not mm -hmm. it's it's creating a space that is um where your soul gets to express itself i love how you share that because it's so i mean i had experiences learning branding imaging and it's so funny to use those words in, con in context with what you do because it doesn't the words don't even fit i right. know I know it's kind of what you're doing, but it just doesn't fit how we think about those things. And and what what word stands out when you were explaining sort of the stereotypes versus what's actually happening is the word connection. Mm -hmm. It's like what you do is help somebody really connect with the essence of who they are and then communicate that essence to create more connection, which is so opposite of this idea of fashion and branding being a way to like compete and stand out, which kind of contribute to this aspect of separation and mean girlness. Yeah, exactly. And I think storytelling is so important, right? I mean, we as a species are so um, connected by storytelling um, and that's how we thrive and how we grow and learn about each other and our history and our past and who we are. And um, so what's a big component of storytelling is the visual aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're painting a picture, even when you're just using words, you're painting a picture in someone's mind. Mm -hmm. And so what I see is how important that is when you're trying to communicate your story of who you are. Um, like for example, take movies, right? And film and how important are costume designers and set designers, right? I mean, if you, if you didn't have that, the, you wouldn't get the true meaning of the film, right? And so like, why would we take any less care with ourselves? And especially when you're looking at it from a business perspective, mm. you don't want to automatically like close the doors to people because they're not truly seeing the magic that you have to offer, right? Because, I mean, I like to use the analogy, another one, um, of <laughs> like, if you have two storefronts and one looks super drab and not exciting. And not thinking about my old storefront, but go on. <laughs> yeah, your old storefront, for example. Hypothetically. Hypothetically speaking. And then right next door is you know, one that is super inviting, lots of colors done the right way, like really beautiful and put together. Which one are you going to go in? You're going to go into the one that is beautiful, right? And like, and I know the word beauty is subjective, but just stay with me here. So like, you're going to go into the one that is enticing to you, mm -hmm. right? And let's just say that you go into that one and you know, the services that they provide don't match the storefront. And then if you had gone over here to this one, the services are like way beyond and way, 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 way outmatch what's over here. So like the people are losing everything that's on offer here because they're just not, they're just walking on by. So it's like, 
I'm working to help pull out that inner magic, that inner, um, you know, uh, creativity and, and the wonder that women bring through their work and who they are, like pulling that out so that other people can see it. Mm, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, God, it's so good. The, the wonder of the, the way women work and pulling that out. I wrote down um, that you communicate the story of who you are and what you do visually. Yeah, you do. I mean, that's part of, that's, like I said, like part of storytelling. And I think it's part of um, putting yourself out there. Um, yeah. What I think is so um, amazing about that is because my direct experience in working with you before and after is that you're telling a story in either way. And the more, even more important thing that I think I'm seeing now that I didn't even see until right now is that you're telling the story you're living. Yeah. And so what am I trying to say here? What, what was so, I'm just relating what you were sharing to my own experience, which is I didn't realize that I was living the story of like all-star player competing in an amateur league like I felt like I was being kept out of this other league because I didn't feel pro. Mm -hmm. I remember saying to you that my version of how this worked was, yeah, yeah, I'll focus on my appearance and all that stuff once I make it. Right. And you were like, mm. <laughs> so can we talk about for a second, like why people don't, prioritize this the way they should? Like what are the misconceptions and the way people think it works versus how it actually works? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it kind of goes back to um, kind of what I was saying earlier is that stereotype around caring about what you look like and putting an effort. And, and then I also think I, I mentioned beauty. Um, I think that there's, that's a loaded word, right? And how it is subjective, but there's so many mixed messages that, you know, our culture puts out there as to what is beautiful. And so I think that's why maybe it's kind of a struggle and people sometimes maybe feel that they have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that I can only, I don't really want to look that way, but that's the way that I have to look. And to me, I think that that's completely false and you have to throw that out, mm -hmm. right? And um, or like with you, I kind of felt like you didn't see it. Like you couldn't see what I saw. You you couldn't see that um, the radiance that was there. And so it was almost like you were, or like you were hiding it mm. or you, you weren't really ready to embrace it because it's scary. Right. And like, because I think that we do have these ideas of what you should look like and, oh, well, I have to be a size zero in order to look like this, or, you know, I have to be 10 years younger or, you know, all that. Am I allowed to cuss on here? Mm, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like all that bullshit, you know, I mean, geez, like, fuck that. So it's, it's noise. It's noise. And it's not real. So I think when you're able to let all that baggage go and, but at the same time, kind of like push the envelope of what maybe you thought you could wear or look like, because you didn't think that you could see yourself that way. Right. Or you didn't think that you could wear that or match that with that, you know, whatever that is. Um, you know, I think that that is the really hard part and it's why I think it's important and so helpful to have somebody from the outside help bring that out in you. I can really speak to that from personal experience and working with you and you'll remember this vividly, but one day in particular, I remember you created this image board for me of like possible 
I don't even call them looks, they're like expressions. And I was obsessed with this one look with a white crop t-shirt and pair of pants. <laughs> we searched forever for these pants. <laughs> and I put them on and <laughs> burst into tears and cried for like a half an hour. And you were so loving and kind. And what I what I want to acknowledge about the work that you do that you may not even have perspective on because your your background isn't coaching, right? Like you just your gift is like your visual artistic ability, your experience and training in fashion and your massive fucking heart. Because uh, somebody once shared with me, well, once not even that long ago, my friend Yanu shared with me that the conversation about how do I look is actually a conversation about am I loved? Mm -hmm. And what I see that you do is you like, burrow yourself into somebody's essence with love and you help crack apart the every aspect of that outer shell that's visually blocking that expression and it is hard it's really scary mm -hmm. because those sh aspects of that shell that we put on that's self that's the essence of self preservation yeah. so when you show up and you're like Hey, like when you say push the envelope, you're not just talking about pushing the envelope on what you're wearing. You're pushing the envelope on self-expression and that's deeply unsafe and very triggering to an ego that feels safe and comfortable in drab backpacker clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Um yeah, I, I just, I completely agree with you. I think that, you know, it's really, it's hard to look at that part of ourselves. Um, and I, and I think that that moment that you're talking about, it was very moving for me as well. Um, because it was like you, I think it was that moment and correct me if I'm wrong, but like from my perspective, it was that moment where, you were kind of having to let go of looking exactly to the T like that picture on Pinterest. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not the purpose of this. And you're never going to look like that. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because what you look like and who you are is enough. And my God, is it stunningly gorgeous. And so like to get you to see that and ignore having to emulate this photo of someone who's completely different than you, um, is, is it's hard mm -hmm. and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it is kind of scary, but like once you get past that, and you understand that like, okay, it's not about having to recreate this exact look and mimic that. It's about understanding what works for me and how to communicate that, um, you know, the essence of that image in my own way. I wrote down um, un unique, <laughs> unique essence versus like image of beauty. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to, I want to dive deeper into why this works like magic to, because what, what I feel in this moment that I deeply want to uncover, even though I lived it is why did my business change so radically when this happened? And I'll just share one thing and then I'll shut up is, um, my hypothesis, and I'd love to hear your, your thoughts, is that I think what we want so desperately, besides success and money and recognition and whatever, is the freedom of authenticity. And when somebody lives that, people notice. They don't even notice what they're noticing, but they notice. Yeah. There's a shift there's a shift change and because you start feeling what I was trying, like what I'm trying to get out of you and like what we're going to do this already like in there. Yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> so, you know, 
when you start realizing that and you start seeing it and it starts, you know, like you get excited about it and you like it, it resonates and it like bleeds into bleeds is like the wrong word. Cause it's like a negative connotation that like, I don't know. Uh, just flows into everything else that you're doing and people pick up on that because it because in turn it's a sense of confidence right so it's like a part of you that you didn't necessarily um want to look at and so it was never something that um, maybe you felt important. And like you said, it was like, oh, well, I'll get to that later. Once I'm more successful, I'll get to that later. And then when you kind of started seeing the feedback and like how you felt, um, and how other people were responding to you, you know, then it's like slowly this realization of, oh, wow, this actually does matter. And I feel great. And like, you know, that's, that's the joy of it. Right. Mm. Does that make sense? <laughs> It does. It really does. It, it also um, makes me think of a couple of words came up while you were talking, um, which one was unapologetic mm -hmm. and one was owning. Mm -hmm. And I think because image is so deep, right? Image and identity are basically like the same thing, right? Your image is your expression of your identity. Yes. Or at least how you feel about it. Right. Identity. And when I think about what you were just saying, and I relate it to my own experience and layer in the aspects you were talking about, like what we think we're supposed to look like, mm -hmm. there were ways that I was apologizing. My, my image was apologetic. It was, I'm not good enough. So let me hide. I'm not thin enough. So I'll dress like a slob until I'm thin. Like that was the big one for me. Like when I lose 50 pounds, then we can do this, right? Cause then I can look like that Pinterest photo. And then there's this other aspect of owning your, your essence, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. And that's where the visual branding piece really came in for me because, and I'm still, you know, I'm still working on this edge because I still have not answered your email from three months ago about the photographer. <laughs> It pushes your edge. This is the part that blew my mind for how deep this work is and how powerful it is. Because I had to start taking photos of myself and having photos taken of me. And you have a photo taken of you and you realize like, ah, uh, that's not what I look like inside. <laughs> yeah. So this, this visual kind of like capturing, aside from the dressing, like that was one edge, but now this other edge of, like it's two things are happening and I'd like for you to tell me why these things are happening. If you can, one is on one level, it's starting to get really exciting. Mm -hmm. And I have these ideas of images that I want of myself to, to communicate the essence of who I am that feel like I'm starting to be like, Ooh, I want, you know, we talked about like high fashion plus like wild photography plus abstract art, like, you know, these things. And at the same time, there's this other part of me going, Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I like to believe that I walk to the edges of yeah. my identity and my business all the time, but Holy shit, does this feel different? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a few things there, like the reason why is because, okay, well, one of the things is I think sometimes it can be overwhelming because you, you, I mean, and you've said this to me before, like, it's hard for you to visualize exactly how you want something to look right. Um, and you know, the messaging and like what you want to put out there, but matching it to a visual representation of that is sometimes challenging, right? So I think then there's this sense of feeling, oh, well, I'm just, I don't know, I'm overwhelmed, and so I'm just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, or not seeing something come together in a way that maybe you had initially planned, and then, like, it just isn't 
it's the, the image that you're taking for that specific content piece is not matching with what you had in your head. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's why there's that hesitation because mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. And that's why like branding and that the branding in and of itself, you know, is it's, it's hard because, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different elements to it. And um, I think if you don't, fully understand your brand and how you want to communicate that through these various channels. Um, you know, it can be very overwhelming and, and get you to like stagnate in a way. Yeah, I can resonate a lot with that. And then I think the other thing that I saw as you were talking is you really are confronted, at least I was, by the limits you're placing on your own self-expression. Mm -hmm. Because if I think about being in front of a camera and like, you know, having great shots taken of me, that requires quite an, again, I'll use the word unapologetic owning mm -hmm. of the desire to capture the okay. essence of who I am. Yeah. And I see myself judging that and leaning into that judgment is very liberating. Like I'm not very good at it yet, but the more I kind of push that edge, mm -hmm. the more liberated I feel. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, look, what you're doing and what people in your same space are, are doing in terms of like putting yourself out there because you, you are the face of your company and that is very vulnerable, right? So, um, especially when you start involving the photographs and for your content and it's like a very intimate way of, you know, connecting the audience to you and who you are. And so that can be, um, if it doesn't look exactly the way that you had thought, um, it can be scary and like i think you and i have talked too a little bit about like not being so literal mm -hmm. right with your imagery and so it's like if you i'm trying to think of it of one of the examples that we were talking i think uh i could probably have it one when you went which one? Oh yeah 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 the when you were dry when you were driving driving one yes, yes. And you want to remind me what the content was that you were <laughs> It was going for, uh, I was going on a, like a writing retreat by myself. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about, oh gosh, I can't even remember the content itself, but I was talking about like the writing retreat and, and I think the journey to get there. Yes. Yeah. And so you were like, you, know, you called me and like, I don't know what to do. Like what kind what? I just FaceTimed you. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, why don't, you know, you know, we kind of talked about it and, and, what exactly you were trying to communicate in this post. And, you know, it was a very simple solution that we came up with. Um, like the difference between me with like the speedometer on my car and you being like, what about like your hand with the steer? It was very artistic. And then and with the films in the background. Yeah. The in the background. <laughs> that kind of leads me to actually sort of my final question. I think that I'm starting to see this tie all together is the word vulnerability, because in my experience, you do not get access to your true authentic essence without vulnerability. Yeah. You just don't get access, you don't get in. Sorry, there's no back door, there's no other way around. And so this- You can't, you can't Photoshop that in. <laughs> and, what, yeah. and what's more vulnerable, than the conversation about am I loved, right? Which we talked about like looks or how do I look is how do, am I loved? Like nothing is more vulnerable than that. And every element of this is so vulnerable for most people. Yeah. So when you enter into that space, you get access to your authenticity. And then what you just helped me see is that's an artistic experience. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of what I don't know about you, but that's kind of the opposite of what I hear when you say literal. It's like that's artistic. That's magical. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would you add anything to that? Um, no, I mean I think you hit the nail on the head. That's all it's part of the unlocking that magic of of who you are and 
allowing yourself to be vulnerable and and loving yourself for it and then through that you know that's where the beauty happens that's where the magic happens and as long as you're ready to allow that to start happening so wait a second that was going to be my final question but <laughs> but we got to talk about that last thing you just said this is the final question okay <laughs> as long as you're ready yeah you just drop a grenade into the conversation which was, yeah talk about that <laughs> Be ready, right? Like if you're there's, I mean, if you have some deep, um, seated issues, right, and and they are filtering up into the way that you perceive yourself, that's you need to do some hard work on yourself, right? And like I think, and that's not, I can't do that for, for you, so we you have to be ready to love yourself and sometimes we're not in that space yet mm -hmm. but when you are ready to love yourself and truly um get to that point where you're okay with the hard stuff when it comes up in sessions and it makes you cry and pushes you to think about uncomfortable things right you have to be ready to let those feelings come and work through them together. Um, because if you're not, it's like, you can't, I mean, you're better at this than me, but like you're, <laughs> you're, you're like blocked and the, you just can't go on the theme of magic, like the magic can't come through. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's blocked. Um, so you have to really be ready to like, move through the boulders and all of that to like let the sunshine in. Um, and it's hard. That's a hard thing. And so, you know, that's why I just think it, this, the whole process of getting there is hard. And so you have to be ready and willing to do the work. That is, I, I feel so complete now. Like I thought we were complete, but that really grounds it for me because, um, I think what you just shared is so important. It's like, you have to be ready to go into that vulnerable space, let out whatever that triggers so it can create space for the magic to come in. And I actually am not surprised by this, but I'm so deeply grateful that this conversation did end up really being about loving yourself enough to unlock authenticity because to me that really really is the magic of what you do <clears throat> there's nothing more I'll just sort of share that a, a couple of weeks ago I wrote down in my journal what I think I want is success what I really want is the freedom that comes from knowing seeing feeling and expressing my own power mm -hmm. And to me, that's really what you're helping me see that this is what your work is about. This is what it does. And that is why it's so magical. Yeah. Yeah. So, part of that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for sharing your magic here. Um, thank you for allowing me the space too. I, I, I have to implore anybody listening or watching this. If you feel this desire to be unlocked in this way, that you connect with Phoebe because even just the exploration initially of meeting her is fun and playful and insightful and you get an opportunity. It's like someone, you gotta remind me, like this is gonna be the weirdest metaphor ever, but you sort of remind me of like the ghost of Christmas future, but like, and more like the fairy, you're the fairy of Christmas future where you, <laughs> you come and you're like, this could be you and it's, <laughs> fun it's such a it, that experience is actually magical in and of itself for someone to to see you so completely and then offer you a glimpse into something you can't see yourself visually is amazing so if somebody wants that experience how do they connect with you um email would be the best way so it's phoebe at phoebeelizabeth.com shares the e the oh. yeah, with, they share. <laughs> we'll put it in the bottom too. So yeah. you know, <laughs> that. 
Um, so the last thing I'll share just for the audience is something that Sarah and I are creating as a result of the episode so far is something that we're calling the magic toolkit, where we're actually reverse engineering the entire conversation and breaking down breaking it down into practical, usable, implementable tools. And you can get that by subscribing to my newsletter, which will be in the comments above or below, wherever they are. And um, obviously share this with somebody who really needs to hear and experience this too. So Phoebe, thank you. I love you, love you, love you. Thank you. All right. Bye all. Bye.